the observation point the observation point on the surface of the sphere so g is equal to 0 on both of these now what we will actually require from all this if I look here then what I need phi is there so phi is specified on the boundary so I will find out this one and then this curly or curly n prime of this one I will have to calculate this one this derivative I need. So in order to calculate that derivative, I will have to write few things first. What is x minus x prime? If I want to calculate this one, what this will be equal to? Can I write like this? That x minus x prime and this is, is a dot product with x minus x prime and a square root. Can I write like this? Yes. Then I can write this one is x square plus x prime square minus 2 x dot x prime and whole square root. Now what about x dot x prime the angle between x and x prime is gamma so this will come out to be cos of gamma so now i can write my this expression that this is equal to g x x prime is equal to 1 over x square plus x prime square minus 2x x prime and cos of gamma 1 by 2 it will become like this for a 1 over x minus x prime it will be equal to this and minus a over because a over x prime so I will write a over x prime and then the rest I will write x square plus a4 over x prime square and x prime square because both this will become x4 is your right minus 2 and a square over x prime square x x prime and cos of gamma it will be equal to this. Now I can simplify this one. What I can do? If I write this one is x prime over a and I move it inside, then it will become x prime square over a square. So x prime square over a square will be multiplied with all this and I will get that g of x, x prime is equal to 1 over x square plus x prime square minus 2x x prime cos of gamma and okay, there will be no vector signs here because they are uh, multiplied here the magnitudes cos gamma and 1 over 2 minus 1 over and this I can write x prime square x square <coughs> over a square plus a square minus 2 x x prime cos of gamma half okay. yes. and now we will have to decide the difference between curly by curly x prime and curly by curly n prime. What's the difference? 
between these two. Curly by curly x prime, it says because the x prime distance is from the center in this direction. So it means curly by curly x prime will be the variation from the center of the sphere in this direction. While curly by curly n prime, n prime is the normal derivative. Normal derivative from where? From the source. So this one is going in this direction. It means it is going toward the surface of the sphere. Because source is here, this source is a charge, maybe a charge distribution. And the variation of the field lines from the source toward the surface are actually this one. So it means that I will have curly G over curly N prime H X prime equals A is equal to minus curly G over curly X prime H X prime equals A. Mean on the surface this variation and this variation are only having change in direction. And one it is this way, the other it is this way. So I can now write that is these two are equal. And further I know that minus curly G by curly X prime and X prime equal to A this is the same if I derivate g with respect to x at x equals a, right? Because either you move the observation point to the surface or you move the source to the surface. The result will be the same. So this thing is also the same that if I write that minus curly g over curly x prime at x prime is equal to a is the same if I do curly g over curly x at x equals a. Both will be the same because the symmetry in both is the same. And what this will give me? You know, when you derivate the potential, space derivative of potential is the electric field. So this is the electric field. And this electric field you have calculated earlier. It was equal to 4 pi sigma. It was equal to the induced charge. You can write K here. The earlier that we calculate in this case was 4 pi k sigma or k 4 pi sigma. But I don't write k here. Why? Because I didn't write k here as well. So I am not writing k. So 4 pi sigma, you know, if you write k here, what is k? 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So 4 pi will cancel with 4 pi and sigma over epsilon naught is then the electric field. Right? So you should keep that thing in mind that we are not using K here. We even didn't use there in the potential. Why? Because if you use K there in G, then K will be here inside G. That K will cancel with this side K. So the result will be the same. So that's why it is easy to get rid of the K as it is cancelling on both sides. So we have, we have, what will be the derivative, what will be the derivative of this G with respect to X prime equals A. If you take the derivative of this, okay, so curly G over curly X prime and X prime equal A. This thing is equal to 4 pi sigma and this is equal, if I take the derivative and I put, and I put x prime equals a, 
I am leaving this to you to calculate this one. Because this is your g, take its derivative with respect to x prime and put x prime equal to a. You will have some simplifications here and then the LCM and finally you will have this one equal to 1 over a and a square minus x square divided by x square plus a square minus 2ax and cos of gamma and this will become 3 by 2 because you know 1 over 2 it will be minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 3 by 2 it will come down here 3 by 2 while the domain will give you this value when it will be specific, simplified with this one clear so it is symmetrical and you should derive this one just three four steps and you will be able to derive this one for gamma I can write that gamma is the angle is the angle between x and x prime. Gamma is the angle between x and x prime. And in spherical polar coordinates, you know that the unit vector x, which I write x vector by the x magnitude, is in bracket for my writing, not writing the unit vectors with it, sine theta cos phi and sine theta sine phi and cos phi. So sine theta cos phi, cos phi, this will be theta, cos theta. And the x prime unit vector, which is the x prime over x prime magnitude, is equal to the prime sine theta prime cos pi prime sine theta prime sine pi prime and cos theta prime. They will be the prime coordinates, and you know what will be cos of gamma. Cos of gamma will be x dot x prime divided by x x prime magnitudes and this will be equal to sine theta sine theta prime cos phi minus phi prime plus cos theta cos theta prime. This will be equal to this. Now here, you know that what we did, phi of x is here. We found this thing, the derivative of this green function 1 over x minus x prime in, in x prime equals a. So we will now put this value and our phi of x will be equal phi of x will be equal means the potential a point x will be equal the very first term which requires no boundary this one you know d cube x prime k rho and then 1 over x minus x prime i can write as g green's function so it will be d cube x prime k g x x prime and rho of x prime means the charge density at x prime minus you know here that this term is zero so one over four pi surface integral and minus here minus and this plus becomes minus so minus one over four pi and surface integral and what we found what we found that this will be da prime what is da prime surface element surface element in spherical polar coordinates is 
R square sine theta d theta d phi. Now R square is equal to a square sine theta d theta d phi u right d omega the solid angle. So if I write this one if they d a prime so these are actually the prime coordinates and this will become d omega prime right so a square d omega prime is actually the area element so i will write that a square d omega prime i have just written this one and then i will write phi x prime so whatever the function will be i don't know but phi and what will be the location of that potential? It will be the surface of the sphere. So the very first parameter will be A because this is the surface, theta prime and phi prime. Not theta phi because this is the prime coordinate you see d omega prime so i am on the surface so phi a theta prime and phi prime i have written actually this way because this is x prime for x prime i have written the spherical polar coordinates and then this value which i derived so this will be 1 over a, a square minus x square divided by, divided by a and this is x square plus a square minus 2ax cos gamma 3 over 2. And now this is the solution, this is the potential. This was already not requiring any boundary. And here we included the boundary, right? We did the calculation for boundary. So now it doesn't matter whether phi will be equal to zero or phi will be equal to non-zero. Clear? When phi will be equal to zero, like on the surface, phi is specified equal to zero. So this term will go to zero and we will have the potential this term, the general term. Because no boundary is there. When boundary is there, then the boundary will have specified potential. And we will discuss hopefully in the next lecture the problem of the example that we will discuss will be sphere with hemispheres at different potentials. And that will actually tell us all the story. Thank you.